faithful. Here's 49ers GM and Hall of Famer John Lynch on KNBR 104.5 and 680 the Sports Leader. All right, well, let's enjoy our weekly hits with 49er GM John Lynch. It is proudly sponsored by Fieldwork Brewing Company. With eight locations around Northern California, fresh beer is always right around the corner. Man, 745 too early for a field work pint? It's never too early for a beer, man. <laughs> Take one, too. Uh, given the, the IU negotiations, you might want to get one for John, too. Yeah, we'll grab a couple. Uh, I'll I get know. a round. First round's on me, all John. All right, we're jumping in. we got to get right to it. Uma, guest line. John, first of all, good morning. How are you? Hey, morning, John. What's up, fellas? Well, hey, uh, yeah. And, and thanks to the uh, the folks at Fieldwork. I, I got a nice delivery yesterday. I got a nice mm-hmm. card right in front of me. I haven't seen the beer yet, but I guess it's down with Corey Rush and his crew if they haven't drank it all yet. Um, <laughs> and uh, very responsive by our guys at Fieldwork. I'm excited to, to taste the sponsor. Yeah, you will enjoy. And hopefully soon you'll be celebrating a signing of Brandon Ayuk. So, we, you know, we're going to get this out of the way early and then we'll move on to the team. Just right now, we talked to you last Friday. Um, what's the status this morning, Thursday, August 22. Yeah, I'd love to make some good radio, but uh, unfortunately, guys, it's, you know, I think Kyle said it yesterday. There's really not a lot of updates. Um, I could tell you that uh, we've continued to be in communication, just haven't, haven't um, you know, nothing to report there. So um, just going to leave it at that, and um, we'll continue to work on it. And the, the same thing with Trent Williams, no, no updates there. Um, good communication with both. Uh, the players and and their representatives, but just uh, haven't made any breakthroughs, and so we'll uh, we'll leave it at that and and focus on uh, the other ninety guys that are here and and doing really great things on the field. John, in terms of Brandon Ayuk, can you guys say to him, "We want you to play on your fifth year option"? You know, I'm not going to get in all the details. Uh, you know, I, I I think we're in a in a tenuous and and uh, time where everything that is said can be examined and all that. So we're just going to leave it at that. No updates and continue to work. I know fans are eagerly awaiting and the season's right around the corner. I can tell everybody this. We feel the urgency to get all our players back. Uh, We're very excited about our team. And those are two guys that uh, have been a big part of us, a huge part of our, our success. So we'd, we'd like to have them both back in the fold. Do you guys have a deadline date of when you like to get these contracts worked out with both Brandon Ayuk and Trent Williams? Uh, last month, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, last, last, yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. that's what it is. So is week one now in question for for both guys, particularly Ayuk? We know Trent's a veteran and the position is different. But would you say that you've gotten to the point now where it's gone so long that week one availability would be in question? No, nah, we're not there yet, but we're getting close. I mean, it's right around the corner. So we're going to continue to try to work things out and, uh, you know, we'll see where these things go. Yeah. Last question about BA for me, John. We saw the wide receiver market explode this off season with guys like Justin Jefferson resetting the market. Is it possible that the situation in Dallas with CD Lamb and the Cowboys is factoring into the negotiations with Brandon Ayuk? Well, I think everything um, factors into the situation. And so that's um, that's the market in general. That's the market at his specific position, um, uh, you know, and, and so it's fluid. And, and that's what sometimes makes these things difficult. And our own constraints, because we've rewarded so many of our players, what we can do, what, what how we value um, people and, and, and things of that nature. So everything uh, is a factor, and that's what makes it uh, a difficult solve is that there's so many variables. But, um, you know, we've done a great job of that in the past and we will continue to, and, and uh, you know, it's frustrating that, it, that we haven't had that breakthrough yet, but we'll remain encouraged and remain focused on our players that are here and doing really, really good things. And then the last one for me is last week you did use the phrase ample time. Is that no longer applicable? There's no, it's not ample time left. I mean, everyone knows when the when the kickoff date uh, is, and and we feel good about our team. Uh, said it many times. We'd love to have those two in the fold, but uh, we we like our our group, and and uh, that's. I'll leave it at that. All right, on to another receiver who's in the news, and that's Ricky Pearsall. How would you characterize your? Are you guys frustrated or? Um, impatient or patient and not frustrated with his injury status? Uh, we're patient and really, really um, excited about Ricky and his development. And it, and it, you know, rookie um, 
at any position coming in is is a tough leap. Um, and then at wide receiver in this offense, it, it's a lot. But but Ricky can handle a lot. It's not ideal to say the least that um, you know he's been off to the side. Um, the good news is Ricky's been able to run and do all these things. But um, with the type of injury he had. Uh, the time up front was critical to allowing for the best result. And so we've been giving him that time. Um, he's been deep in the playbook. He's been in all the meetings. He's been doing his rehab vigorously. Ricky's a worker, and he's a very talented football player. So um, we've been doing the best we can given the circumstances. Ricky's been been excellent in doing his part, and uh, I think it's going to be soon – uh, where we can get him back out there on the field and, and really try to accelerate the process. He's going to be a big part of what we do. And, um, you know, we're as high on him as we were when we were drafted or higher. And when he's been out there, it's been really good. Unfortunately, he's ran into a couple of injuries, and those things happen. And you have to have the patience. Uh, it'd be foolish just to rush him saying, hey, we have to have him ready. He's a rookie. Well, that's not real smart if he's not going to be healthy. And so um, – um, I, I appreciate Kyle and his staff allowing us the patience for the health and performance staff to to give kind of the, the markers as to when he's ready to get back out there. And I, I, I know he's getting close to being back out there on the field. Jacob Cowling is another rookie wide receiver that I want to ask you about. John showed some flashes this past weekend in the second preseason game of the year. What do you think about his skill set? How does he factor into the return game possibly? And where do you think he ends up in this wide receiver room? Cowing's explosive. Uh, we knew that coming out of Arizona. He's a really good football player. Um, I think he can add a dimension to this team. Uh, he's got a long way to go. Um, you know, again, um, some health with some hamstring issues early in camp. Um, but now he's stacking days, and you're starting to see the talent. I mean, I, I thought we saw it really illustrated well in a game versus the Saints, catching punts and doing real – really well fielding the the punts. I I know talking to Brian Schneider, our special teams coach, he was loving the fact that we were playing uh, the Saints who had an Aussie right foot punter. So you're going to get every type of spin. You got a left foot punter and then you had swirling wind and and Jacob, you know, passed that test with flying colors. Uh, That's a way he can contribute right away. But we saw him, you know, running routes, um, you know, in, uh, on the short intermediate. And then we saw the deep ball that he caught. Uh, we shot, saw jet sweeps. We saw him in there blocking. We require that at our receivers. And he's not the biggest guy, but he's got a lot of fight to him. And so it was a really good uh, debut, you know, uh, preseason game for Jacob. And, and he's got a long way to go. But, man, I think everyone saw how explosive he can be. And he can help us right away. Talking to John Lynch, 49er general manager, president of football ops. As the Niners get ready to take on the Vegas Raiders down in Vegas Friday night. And then the Monday night, September 9 opener, we discuss Brandon Ayuk, Trent Williams, Ricky Pearsall. This rookie class seems to be getting some buzz amongst the – everybody's down at practice every day. Obviously, the Pearsall injury is a bit of a bummer. But the DBs I wanted to ask you about. And, and it's so important now, that third corner, that slot corner is so important in today's day and age. Basketball on grass, so many receivers – so, is Renardo Green in the mix there? How would you characterize your cornerback depth chart? I think it's as good as it's been since we've been here. Uh, obviously, uh, the, the two two studs that we roll out there with Charvarius, Mooney Ward, and Diamador Lenore, those guys have been tremendous in camp. I think even raised their game to a different level. We really saw Mooney Ward take a big leap. Uh, Diamador has been solid since he's been here, but his offseason has just been tremendous, playing at a really high level. Uh, Darrell Luter is a guy we drafted last year, really doing well. Renardo, we drafted in the second round, and, man, his his competition, that's what we saw on film. He likes getting up in people's faces and competing, and that's what he's done since he's arrived here. Uh, we've put a lot on him, asking him to play inside and in the in the slot and outside, and that, that we knew that that might slow him down early, but we thought we put the work in, and then he has that versatility during the year, and he's been awesome handling all that. He's a very talented football player. You know, we still have Ambry Thomas, who's going to start the year on IR with the broken forearm, uh, Sammy Womack, and Rocky Yassin's a, a veteran who's played football. So we've got a, a deep, really strong group uh, that, uh, man, it's going to be a great asset for our team, but the the rookie class you mentioned, uh, we're loving this rookie class. They got to go do it. They haven't played a game yet. Um, but uh, I, I think when you look all the way from Ricky Pearsall 
uh, down to Tatum Bethune, our seventh round pick, and everybody in between with Mustafa and Cowing and Pooney, obviously. Uh, Evan Anderson, a free agent. I mean, like, guys are really, this class is going to be something special, I think, for a long time and, and uh, have a really good feeling about the group. John, it's felt like the last couple of seasons there's been a lot of attention on the back of quarterbacks with the San Francisco 49ers. Not as much attention this offseason, but there is a QB2 battle going on right now between Josh Dobbs and Brandon Allen. I thought Tanner Mordecai showed some good flashes on Saturday, too, or last Sunday, excuse me. How would you break down the backup options behind Brock Purdy in that QB2 battle? It's been interesting to watch, Marcus. It's uh, been really good competition, and, um, you know, it's 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 funny. It's like a horse race. One pulls ahead, and then the other comes, and um, you know, Dobbs has been really good in these preseason games. I think everyone's seen that and, uh, probably better than he's been out on the practice field. And, and hopefully now that starts translating in the practice field because of the confidence he's gained and the time on task in our system, he's bounced around a lot from team to team in the last, uh, calendar year. So I think now settling in, he's done really well. Brandon Allen's a guy we have a lot of belief in. Uh, Mordecai, at the end of practice yesterday, there was a ball thrown to Jacob Cowing. I thought it was Purdy. It was such a beautiful ball. I look over, and it was Tanner Mordecai. So we got four strong options there, and uh, we like them all. So uh, I'll leave that to Kyle and his group, uh, and, and I think this preseason game, everything is evaluated, every practice is. This last preseason game is going to allow that to sort out even more, and uh, it's really exciting. It's a good development for our team. John, the only thing that kind of caused people to have a little lump in their throat with Brock Purdy was him playing behind the non-starting offensive line, for the most part, uh, and getting chased around a little bit. Do you guys do you, do you have a little regret about putting him out there in that situation? How did you evaluate it? Yeah, uh, I, I didn't. You know, I think first of all, the motivation came from Brock. He he wanted to to get out there. He wanted to be a part of the the operation. I think probably from last year, you know, not having an opportunity to play in the preseason, um, you want to knock off that rust. And, and you know, there at, at some point, you know, guys, this is, you got to get ready. It, it's a challenge to play in the NFL and, and you can't play scared. You got to, you got to go. And uh, I think back to my day, we used to play a lot of preseason. <laughs> I remember my first preseason game lining up and there was John Elway, probably at 34 years old, you know, like, He's out there, and Dan Marino was in the second, and Jim Kelly in the third. So, like, I think everybody is so, and I get it, uh, everybody is so concerned. Um, and Brock was behind our starting. Colton McKivitz was lining up. Pooney, who has, has really earned that role to this point. Um, you know, uh, Brindell was in there. Zakelj was at left guard because Banks is out. And then Jalen Moore has really acquitted himself well. So, uh, it was a bummer as the game got closer. Some of the skill guys kind of got nicked up, and so he was out there. But Brock wanted to be out there. We felt safe with him out there with the offensive line, and, and I think he got great value out of it. So I know a lot of people examine that, but uh, we'll never play scared. We always try to play smart. And, uh, you know, we made a calculated decision, and, and uh, you know, he, he got better from it. All right, John, we know you got to go, but I know you come on the radio, and it's, it's more fun to just kind of shoot the breeze and talk, and we have to grill you about this Ayuk stuff. It's not that much fun. Are you having any Are you having any fun? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. You know, I've, I've got a blessed life. Every time I walk in this building, I feel blessed that uh, I have the opportunity to be a part of this organization. We've done a lot of really good things. I want to do great things. I want, I want to win championships, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to put the foundation in place. The guys are putting the work. I'm so proud of the type of people we have in this building, on this roster. And, uh, you know, I keep saying it, but I'll talk to my counterparts throughout the league, and they say, man, we'd love to have the problems you guys have. You guys have a lot of great players, and, and we know that. We're cognizant. We also have a lot of great people, and uh, these things will sort themselves out. And, yeah, I have to remind myself of that every now and then. I have to have a uh, field work. Uh, brew every now and then to <laughs> remind myself that it's all good and uh, it is all good around here and we're, we're going to have an outstanding year I'm, I'm confident in that and uh, I appreciate that you guys have a job to do that yeah. everyone has this much interest in the Niners and it's time to roll yeah everybody wants to, to get done everybody wants to watch the best football players out there I know you got to go but the lat did you ever meet Al Adels no I didn't man oh, but I um uh, you know, I, I watch a lot of Warriors when I can, and I, I just hear the reverence that people talk about him with. So oh, I, I know when people who I'm whom I have great respect for talk about a guy like that with that kind of reverence, 
uh, seems like he was a special guy, and I did I did see that he passed yesterday. So, um, you know, uh, say some prayers for him. Yeah, just fam. yeah. He he was. You would have loved him. Pure class, pure dignity. And oh, by the way, a lot like you. Hmm. Very classy, very dignified. But if you need to go hit somebody, he'll go hit somebody. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. 